Hey, party people! I'm back to cast uh, Jadong versus Bisu. I told you I was only going to do a Stork Flash Jadong and Bisu games, and I'm a man of my word. It's like I'm living out the twilight years of a commentator, where you cast nothing but Stork Flash Jadong and Bisu games, then you rest on your laurels, you come back occasionally with a video saying, Sorry guys, I have to retire now. You go away for three to five months and you come back and cast more Jadong, Stork, Flash, and Bisu games. I'm looking forward to it, whenever that does happen. Hopefully further down the road. But uh, this is the way I work between seasons. I'm kind of like an int. It takes me a while to do anything. Between seasons. <gasps> Jadong is good. Oh, wow. I gotta stop doing that. Although it would be fun to <laughs> do an entire commentary in an int voice. That would be a great one for uh, one of those games at the end of OSL, round of 16s that don't matter, to annoy the listener and amuse myself. I love it. But as you saw there, I don't know if you uh, caught the glimpse of uh, Bisu's record that was below him there, but he's been doing fantastically in this winner's league, and this pro league in general. I think, I think he is at the top for the number of wins um, this season of Pro League for a single player, which is insane. It's insane for a Protoss player, and it's insane for Bisu, because I remember not too long ago when Bisu was in a slump. He had to go on vacation, and even after va the vacation, he wasn't himself. And I definitely remember that, and it's good to see Bisu getting back in form, because I think he definitely is. And he's going to have to be in form against Jadong. Here we go. This is going to be on Fortress. Jadong versus Bitu. Except up at the 12 o'clock position in orange is Jadong. That means down at the 6 o'clock position in teal, I think. Yes, teal is. Okay. I did it once. I won't do it again. Kidding. Bitu. Okay. So, Jadong, Jadong, Jadong. I wish I could say the same about Jadong that he's been performing at top level, but he really hasn't. Um. I've been noticing that a lot about Jadong's play as of late, and in the last OSL a bit too. He just doesn't seem to be Jadong these days. He doesn't have that same spark that he's always had in his play, which I guess is understandable. He, I mean, he has so many accomplishments already. It's probably tough to get himself fired up. Although it might be a bit easier to do that in Pro League since your entire team is depending on you, especially Hwasyon Oz, aka Jadong Oz. As you can see from the first-person perspectives, both these guys have insane APM. I think it's a bit more surprising in Bisu's case, since Protoss players usually don't have high APM. Bisu probably has the highest APM of any Protoss player, which helps out in late game. Um, maybe not so much in early to mid game, because Protoss players generally only need, only need about 300 APM, sometimes less in Stork's case. and Jang B's case, all the con uh, Protoss players. But as I said, Jadong is not performing at top level, but but he still is a major threat in Pro League. He's still in the top 10 of all the wins of the players, but he is not the best Zerg player in Pro League. That is Hydra, <laughs> which is very weird to say, but um, if you remember, last season in the OSL, I was talking about Hydra and how he had improved a lot. But after I casted my last Hydra games in the last OSL, he has improved even more. It's just exponential growth. It's insane, really. Um, Height Entus was like, um, we need a really good uh, Zerg player since Effort left. We, just, we need a new Effort. And Hydra went, okay. And he just became a new Effort. It's insane. He's very rapidly becoming the second best Zerg player behind Jadong, of course. But he's going to have to prove himself in the MSL Finals. If he wins the MSL Finals, I think he will solidify um, his spot as the number two Zerg. But Bisu in here with the Bastard Probe. Bisu's um, first probe, the Scouting Probe, is the most annoying Scouting Probe in all of StarCraft. He's going to try to take down one of Jadong's drones, but that uh, that's a very rare feat. I don't know if I've ever seen a Protoss player take down one of uh, Jadong's drones this early in the game. He's very quick to snap those drones into position and attack uh, the probe. As the probe's coming in with its wacky particle beams. Sweet! Eat particle beams! Trying to take down that one drone. I think he has it down to yellow, but 
I really don't think uh, Jay Nong is going to allow a drone to go down. He might be making me eat my words, though. That drone is in yellow, half health. And Bisu is going to try his best to take that thing down. And of course, Bisu, I think he's only taken shield damage on the probe so far. I thought that he's going to be okay as far as that goes. And let's check out Bisu's build a bit. He did go for the Forge, Fast Expand. Oh, he has the drone down to red. And Jadon decided to run away with that. He's like, okay, I'm not going to risk that. I'm going to run it to the Natural Expansion, which just popped up for him. And he's getting his lair up at the same time. And Bisu almost losing his probe there. Oh, he does lose the probe inside of here before he sees the next building. But he did see the lair morphing in, and that is some very important information for him. He knows it's not going to be a Hydra bust, so he doesn't need to overcommit to cannons. Although, um, hopefully he learned from Strok's games against Jadong that is that you do need to build your second cannon at least some point during the game. Because uh, Jadong is well known for just abandoning... All reason, just going for non-stop pumping of Zerglings from three hatcheries. And it doesn't matter if he has his lair or not. If he sees an opportunity, he's going to grab it and ride it home. So Bisu will have to put down a second cannon, I think. Especially now that Jadong has scouted this. Yeah, Jadong went in there trying to see if there was a second cannon. He didn't see it with his overlord. So this is uh, the point in the game that Jadong might attack full on with Zerglings. So Bisu is going to have to be mindful of that. But he does have... Uh, his probe scout going back into the bases, so he will be able to see if the larvae are being morphed into zerglings. So if Jadong does go for that, Bisu will be prepared. So, okay, Bisu he scouts the spire, and he's going to hang in there, try to see what is pumping from those larvae. Bisu, some nice micro from Bisu uh, with his first zealot down here trying to cause some havoc. But Jadong microing away. Oh, this is an excellent micro display by these guys already. You can tell why they're in the top 10 uh, of the Pro League right now. Because they're both so darn good. Alright, the Spire about to pop up. Pretty standard stuff from Jadong, it seems. And uh, as you can tell, this, is qu this build is quite a bit different than uh, what Stork was using in the last OSL. I mean, Stork, he uh, went for an odd build where he bypassed the plus one attack. Um, to get up his tech faster, basically. Get a faster Citadel of Adum, some faster Corsairs out in the field to cause more havoc that way. And that's just not really the way uh, that Bisu plays, at least, at least not recently. Uh, Bisu's openings are very aggressive. As you see, he already has his uh, second gateway down. This is generally what he opens with. Two gateways, uh, pumping lots of plus one speed lots. Which is uh, very scary for a Zerg player who's trying to switch into a Hydra build um, off of three bases. He forces the Zerg to build a lot of static defense and waste a lot of drones and minerals on that, so it's always a good thing to do. But Bisu looking for the Overlords, but he's going to have to hightail it out of there. Now that the Scourge are out, he's going to have to run back to his base. But he has those two Corsairs there, he's going to have to group them up and play a lot more defensively lest he die. But the Evolution Chamber coming up for Jadong at his third base, his second expansion over there at the 9 o'clock position. And he's trying to scare those Zerglings off. Oh, that might backfire. No, it does not backfire, but he's trying to take down an Overlord now. But Bisu almost losing a Corsair. So Jadong will be able to sneak by that. But now Jadong is hanging around the Stargate with two Scourge. I don't know uh, when the next Corsair is going to pop up. But uh, when it does pop up, it's going to be in danger. Oh, the Corsair. Oh, one Scourge lands the Corsair. Oh, oh, Bisu. That is a very early Corsair loss. So that's going to hurt him a lot. And uh, Jadong could definitely take advantage of this situation. And try to take that air superiority. Since he sniped such an early Corsair... He could go for a lot more Scourge. Just If you see like a fleet of Scourge out, you know he's going to try to take that air. And go with the... Uh, well, he has about four Scourge out in the on the field that I see. Uh, not, not necessarily meaning he's going to go for Mutilus or anything, but he, it's definitely a possibility at this stage in the... Oh, Mutilus! Of course! Of course, Jadong, once he sees an opportunity, <laughs> she goes for the jugular, man. So Jadong is going to try to take down the remaining Corsairs with Scourge and then go in there with Mutilus. Of course, this is always a, a risky build for a Zerg player, I think. Because Mutilus are so weak against grouped up Corsair Splash. Um, you really have to be very good at, at Scourge cloning, basically. you got to Scourge clone your butt off to take down all the Corsairs. Or at least get them down to about one or two Corsairs. 
So that means the gentleman will have to attack soon. He's trying to come in here uh, with as many scourge as he can muster, getting rid of these pesky zealots in the middle, <laughs> that one zealot left. He's like, when I said my life were higher, I, d I didn't actually mean, ah, running back to the base. But now Bisu trying to put on a little bit of additional pressure at that natural expansion for Jadon, but forced to back off yet again. He doesn't have any anti-air in the field. Man, a lot of scourge out. Uh, for Jadong, yeah, he's going to try to take down every single one of those Corsairs. But he's taking his sweet time to do it. Uh, Bisu already keen to this, built some more uh, cannons inside of his main. That's going to help out with the defense there. And maybe Jadong was wise to that. Maybe that's not why he's not attacking. He's like, well, you probably have a lot of cannons inside of your main. He's testing w the waters here a bit, but he is not committing to a full-on attack. He's trying to draw the Corsairs out away from the cannons, I think. But now he's coming in full on inside this main. There come all the Scourge, going for a huge Scourge attack. But oh, I think too, too many Scourge landing on each of the Corsairs. Oh, it takes down another Corsair, though. So Jadong, he got the Corsair count pretty low, but he's he's run out of Mutilus himself. He took a lot of splash damage there inside of the main. And Bisu deciding to take his third base here. Um, the power of her protiles off of three bases is pretty atrocious, so Jadong will probably go for speedlings or something to try to take that down. I mean, the inside bases are pretty vulnerable anyway, so I, I'd say expect that from Jadong pretty soon. But Bisu has decided to go for an Archon first, seeing the Mutalists out there. He's like, uh, well, he might commit. He might commit to all Mutalists. Haven't seen the Hydralist yet, so I need to be prepared for an all Mutalist build if it happens. But I'm going to have to look at uh, Jadong's bases again to see if he is switching in the Hydras. I haven't seen the Hydra list in yet from him. So if he commits to all Mutas, uh, this might work out very poorly for Jadong. Because he's already lost most of his Mutas in that one splash attack. Of course, he could still get very lucky with the Scourge hits. Uh, take down more Corsairs with more Scourge. And uh, put himself in a better position. But he's dealing with Archons as well. Some uh, heavy splash units. The observers are looking at the bases. And I don't see the Hydralist in yet. So this could be very bad for Jadon. But he has an awful lot of Scourge still out there. So he's going for another Scourge trap. Uh, of these Corsairs. Going straight into the main yet again. He finds the Corsairs. He's going to land on them. Jadon taking out most of the Corsairs. And he has taken out most of the Corsairs. Coming in with a... Uh, one reinforcement Mutalist there. He's pretty down on Mutus, but he took out every single one of the Corsairs. So Bisu, I think Bisu is in trouble now. Yeah, he's going for somewhat of a counterattack inside the natural expansion to get Draenon to uh, draw back with all of his Mutas. Keep the, the Mutas away from his main, away from his Corsairs, so he can build those back up again. But Bisu, he's actually getting a lot of damage done at the natural expansion. The static defense a little bit late for Draenon. But uh, yeah, there's only one sunken colony left. Of course, there's not many troops left for Bisu, but he took down most of the sunkens, two sunkens left uh, for Jadong. As Jadong is taking his fifth base, didn't even see that. Up at the 10 o'clock position, he has the hatchery morphing up there. So he's, he's going to have a booming economy soon uh, if Bisu can't do anything about it. And Bisu is very low on Corsairs. But uh, one thing that Bisu does have working for him is he still has his third base. Jadong has committed most of his minerals to these mutas and, uh, and his new base. Going to try to saturate that soon. So he doesn't have a bunch of zerglings running around to attack that base. He doesn't have any kind of force to attack that other than his mutalus. Which will be fended off by the Archons hanging around uh, that inside 6 o'clock base. And now Bisu is going for a small attack. Uh, at the natural expansion, try to sneak by with some zealots. All oh, the zealots are both in red, but they make it by. So that's going to annoy Jadong even more. He might even lose some drones. If he doesn't micro, oh, he's losing some gas drones. So Jadong uh, forced to go in there with a few zerglings, but he should be able to clean that up pretty quickly. Bisu does have the Archon, and see if the Archon can get, can get a huge splash here. Already splashed the... Uh, uh, scourge quite a bit. Now the Scourge flying over the cannons, that's going to limit the Scourge count that Jadong has. So he's got to pick his battles as he's attacking this main. Because this is where Bisu has focused all of his attention. And Bisu doesn't really have much else um, protecting the rest of his bases other than, a, other than a few cannons at the natural expansion. But Bisu is flooding up with another troop. As I said, Protoss off of three bases is uh, ridiculously strong, so hopefully that kicks in for Bisu soon, because he's definitely going to need a major attack soon. 
uh, to deal with that fifth base, that five base economy from Jadon. But this is a huge attack actually from Beast with this natural expansion coming in with an awful lot of zealots. But as you can see, I think uh, Zerglings are streaming up here now. So as long as the Mutalists can stay out of range of the of Archons, I think that Jadong will be able to clean this up eventually. He's going to lose all of his static defense, but that doesn't really matter as long as he gets rid of the Zealots and everything. But oh, no, another huge grouping of Corsairs comes in, so jadon has got to back off and uh, wait until he has more Scourge in to take those out. But the Hive already morphing for Jadong. Jadong's about to become a very huge threat for Bisu if he doesn't come in with more reinforcements and keep on the pressure of this natural expansion. That's basically what Bisu has to do at this point. Just keep on the pressure. Keep pressuring the natural expansion and keep Jadong inside of his bases. But now Jadong, oh, he takes out the Archon and he's chasing down these Corsairs as Bisu's streaming up with more Zealots. <laughs> deciding to back off he sees us and the zealots try to attack air oh that didn't work too well so they're running back and uh now jaylong he might try somewhat of a contain down here he already has a huge flea to scourge out and bisu i think he's just now upgrading dragoon range i think he already has a plus one for his corsairs uh dragoon range from bisu switching into a dragoon build but another evolution chamber for jaylong he's not very well saturated on all of his bases but he still has five bases going into hive tech, so he's going to be a major threat if Bisu can't do anything about it. But I saw that Bisu was grouping up more troops. He's trying to take his fourth base. Not sure how successful that's going to be. I mean, the Mutalists are out there. Yeah, the Mutalists are going to focus down the Nexus, and Bisu was forced to cancel the Nexus. So Bisu is moving up with a small force. Uh, to, to put more pressure on that natural expansion, I think. Coming up with some Dragoons and some High Templar as well. But the High Templar might not last long against those Mutalists. The, oh, the Scourge! Yeah, another huge Scourge trap from Jadong. Takes out all but three Corsairs. But uh, most of the Mutalists get down another Storm for Bisu. Oh, nice Storms on top of the Mutalists. Yeah, the Storm's actually working well there to take the Mutalists down to low health and uh, make it easier for the Dragoons to clean this up. If the, the Dragoons survive... Uh, they might be able to take down <laughs> these uh, Mutalists over here since he's pressuring the front. Another storm over all of the Mutalists. That was insane. So the Mutalists uh, focus down and Jaylong is trying to switch into a Hydralis build. I already saw a Hydralis over there. Actually a Lurker build going straight into Lurkers trying to defend with those. But Bisu, since he doesn't have much in the means of detection, he's trying to storm over the Lurkers successfully, I might add. I mean, there's only one Lurker left at that natural expansion, but... Jadong uh, doing the best he can to defend with minimal troops since he went for a fifth base that is stretching himself very thin, but lurkers can help him a lot in this situation. Abisu going for the spawning pool. <laughs> Going to try to get rid of those drones first and then snipe the spawning pool. If he takes down the spawning pool, this could be huge. He's just going to be able to roll well, with Dragoons, basically, because that is the big advantage for a Zerg player at this stage in the game, just to pump non-stop Zerglings and take down those pesky Dragoons. But continued storms over the Lurkers from Bisu is making such good use of those storms. But he doesn't have any detection to uh, deal with these... Oh, he's trying to splash his own Zealot to take down that one um, a Lurker, but unsuccessfully, unsuccessfully doing that. And now the uh, Zerglings are sneaking in to take down uh, the Dragoons, and not much in the means of Zealots to help out with that attack. But Bisu has somehow snuck more Zealots inside of this main... Oh man, uh, Jadong's drone saturation is pretty slim, actually. He doesn't have any drones at his natural, no drones inside of his main. And he's going to lose his spawning pool. Jadong, he's focusing in on the... Oh, he takes out the Zealots before he loses his spawning pool. This is an insane game. <laughs> I'm kind of amazed at how insane this game is so far. But now that Bisu is moving up with a very large force, looks like his third base has kicked in now. And he's able to flood up with a huge amount of Zealots. That is the big help from a third base, I think, is able to pump Zealots along with your high-tiered units. Um like the Archons and the High Templar you need. But now the Dragoon's coming in. And once Bisu get Oh, there's the Observer. I was just getting ready to mention, Bisu, you better get some Observers soon. But he does have his Observer. He's going to be able to surround that Lurker and take it down soon enough. And that's basically uh, Jadong's last saving grace. He's still going to be on four bases, but he's not mining from one of them. He's going to lose his Hive and his Spawning Pool once Bisu moves into that. But now... Uh, 
it looks like Jadong is attacking this inside 6 o'clock base, but luckily for Bisu, he's already taken his 8 o'clock base, already taken that down there, storming over his own probes a bit. But trying to catch those uh, pesky zerklings with that storm. The hive goes down, the spire's about to go down. This is a lot of precious tech that uh, Jadong can't really afford to lose. So Jadong's coming in, he's still at three bases, but he's dealing with Bisu at four bases now. I'm not sure if Jadong even took down that inside 6 o'clock base. I don't know if he sniped the Nexus there or not. I'm going to say no, because I saw Bisu storm over pretty much all the um, Zerglings that were remaining down there. So Jadong trying to take the 2 o'clock base, but he is not doing well in this game now. Not well at all. And Bisu is flooding out there with a huge amount of troops. It's a massive ground army from Bisu. He transitioned very well from the Corsair straight into ground army. And this is very much a Bisu standard style of play here, and this is why he's such a strong player. The multitasking ability of this man is insane. But now Jadong has scouted that base down at the 8 o'clock position, and that might force him to submit soon enough. He's going to say, oh crap, he's got another base? Damn it. So he's built a lot of static defense here because he knew that Bisu would attack this base. But oh, massive storms. Bisu just did about six storms in one spot. Eh, why not? He's pretty much got this game now as long as he takes down the static defense. Has an observer end to help out uh, with the lurkers storming over the drone line. All of the static defense going down. Uh, just this powerful, powerful Protoss army. Plus three attack on that Pro Protoss army, by the way, and that is ripping through everything. The Archons with plus three attack are almost unstoppable. Can't plague them. Well, you can, but yeah, they have ten health, so that's eh, not going to help too much. But Bisu has already grinded his way through this base, and that's going to be it for Jadong. No idea why he hasn't GG'd yet. But uh, Jadong is going to go down in this set, and Bisu is going to take it. The reigning champion of Pro League so far. Yeah, Bisu has three all kills in this winner's league, which is just fantastic. I mean, there's a thread over on Team Liquid showing, like, the all kills. And uh, there's a GG, by the way. But I was going to say he has the golden AK-47, which I thought was funny. AK, all kill. But Bisu gets it. Jadong goes down. Down with the dong. Hopefully we see that kind of uh, play from Bisu in the next OSL. I hope so. And the next, um, I don't know, Angel Soft Toilet Paper OSL. Man, that'd be a hell of a sponsor, by the way. Alright, this has been Nuke. I will be back soon with another video.